Hello, everyone. Felipe here. Happy Monday. Hope everyone had an awesome weekend. So as you know, I'm here to keep you up to date with current market news and teachings. This is in no way, shape or form financial or investment advice just for educational purposes only. OK, um, so I'll go ahead and jump into what I'm seeing. Right. So let me swap over here. And I've been going on about this for a little while now um, in terms of me, you know, um, looking at data and, and just analyzing things. And uh, I agree uh, with this article. Um, Ray Dalio, a very smart guy. I've read a couple of his books, Principles. It's an amazing book. If you haven't read that yet, I highly recommend it. Um, the, the coming debt crisis is another one, I believe, or the big debt crisis, something along those lines. So very, very, very smart guy. Uh, so Ray Dalio basically says U.S. is going to have a debt crisis. Um, in, in, in other terms, that means the U.S. is going to potentially go through a, a credit crisis, right? That means that that's not going to be able to be paid and it would make it makes sense right interest rates are continuously going up so it's more expensive to borrow money therefore it's harder to pay it back um so according to him he says we're going to have a debt crisis in this country uh u.s debt levels surpass uh 33 trillion for the first time and the u.s is paying a lot of interest on that the interest has gone up including for the u.s so they are paying more interest for their debt. Uh, U.S. debt levels have loomed in recent years, especially after a roughly 50% increase in federal spending between fiscal 2019 and um, fiscal 2021. Investors fear interest rates may keep rising as the U.S. financial situation worsens, hurting the uh, demand for treasuries. Um, bond market treasuries is the everything market. It's basically where all lending comes from, all borrowing comes from right it's the big market trillions and trillions of dollars um it's not a small market so any trouble in this market is very very dangerous because it might mean that lending slows down or lending can potentially stop right and that would be really bad um i think you're going to get a meaningful slowdown in the economy according to um ray dalio um so i'll just swap over here and then I'll kind of show what this means, right? Um, so the collapse in treasury bonds now ranks among the worst market crashes in history. Uh, the bond market has crashed. It has gone down by a lot, right? Because rates are going up. Uh, so since March, 2020, treasury bonds, bonds with maturities of 10 years or more have plummeted 46%. Uh, just uh, That's just under um, losses uh, seen in the stock market when the dot-com bubble burst. Bond market sell-off, the sending yield soaring is starting to eclipse some of the most extreme market meltdowns of the past eras. Losses on treasury bonds with maturities of 10 year or more had notched 46% since March 2020, while the 30-year bond has plunged 53%. If someone has held bonds long term or had a bond fund, they got they're currently in a big loss, loss of 53, 57 percent. And if they're holding a lot of longer term bonds, which are the ones hit the most, uh, that's not good stuff, which I'll kind of go into it because a lot of corporations buy these things and pretty much everyone that has put money in treasuries um, a while back or anytime soon have taken a loss, right? Um, so losses are over twice as big as those seen in the nine, in 1981 when the 10 year yields neared 16%. Uh, the crash came as former Federal Reserve uh, Chair, Chairman uh, Paul Volcker uh, grapper, grappled with historic inflation and pushed the federal fund rate to just under 20%. Monetary tightening increases in rates and, and um, in the post-pandemic era has caused uh, basically the bond market route we're seeing now, the increase of interest rates. Uh, because um, like, like I've said, uh, when interest rates go up, every time new bonds come into the market, they come with those higher interest rates, right? So they're gonna be paying the higher interest rates. So the older bonds that are paying lower interest rate 
um, are less attractive. So their value goes down because preferably, if you think about it, would you rather buy a bond for cheaper that pay or uh, the equivalent price basically, but pays you more interest than to buy one that pays you less interest. It just makes absolute sense. You'd want the one that pays more interest rate. Um, and that's what's going on with the bond market. Uh, long duration yields have climbed to their highest since 2007 as a result with the 30 year note passing the 5% barrier for the first time in decades. Last time was around the 07, 08 area and it caused some problems, right? Um, so this is basically the bond market right here. Um, this is the ETF, uh, EDV, which is like a Vanguard a duration treasury ETF. Um, you can kind of see here, the bond market looks ugly. It's gotten really hammered over the recent past. Um, you bought these anywhere around the pandemic era or the COVID era or any funds holding this um, or any treasury like things are down a lot They're They've taken huge, they're currently holding on to big paper losses, right? Or to big difference, right? In, in terms of how far down um, these have gone. And, and it just makes sense. Um, you can you can see there it has like a sixty percent um, decline, um, and you can see uh, the here basically the ten year yield has just exploded to um, so the upside, right? Ten year yield is just like a rocket ship, and this is what's causing the devaluation um, or just basically yields going up or causing um, bonds to devalue because the newer ones come out they're paying more interest people prefer the ones that pay more interest the older ones are less attractive less demand therefore the value goes down um so you can see here 10 year yield uh basically close to five percent that's crazy it hasn't been in that level in a long time um and I, you can kind of see why what's going on in the bond market is going on right why the banks some of the banks are having issues and so forth um on another note basically here um i like showing the silver prices because basically silver um should be going up right if, if inflation is a concern and all these kind of things um so i like watching silver uh, because if prices for silver go down uh, that means manufacturing is slowing down so it's it's a good way to kind of like look at what global manufacturing might be doing right silver prices or silver is used in manufacturing for all kinds of equipment items and things and products you can't imagine they're used is used a lot right as a material for manufacturing so i like watching it in terms of um where is silver price is going i know they're crazy they're all over the place sometimes but when they're going down, I take it as a potential where manufacturing or global manufacturing is uh, slowing down. Uh, and another note here, basically, um, I wanted to go into this video, kind of look at PayPal, um, because PayPal is a crazy thing to see or look at, right? You can see PayPal's uh, stock price right here. Um, this thing is insane. It was like 300 bucks not too long ago during the whole COVID pandemic um, boom, almost like 280. And then now it's in the toilet. It's pretty, pretty um, beat down. It's pretty hammered. Um, PayPal's uh, stock. And I was curious because when I see things that are like potentially selling for cheap or people are just afraid to touch it it gets my curiosity right and then i want to see hey maybe there's something here there's some potential considering this is um a company that basically survived the dot-com bus uh it, they've been around for a while right they have a lot of market share um and they're i don't know if they're they're pioneers of like um 
of digital transactions and so forth, but they're one of the first ones in the game, right? Um, so on that, basically, I'm going to swap over here and I'm going to go into see how their numbers look, right? Um, see what's going on. So PayPal basically operates a technology platform that enables digital technology platforms. Um, pay, uh, PayPal Holding operates a technological platform that enables digital payments on behalf of merchants and consumers world, worldwide. The company provides payment solutions under the um, PayPal, PayPal Credit, Braintree, Venmo, Zoom, PayPal, Zettle, HyperWallet, PayPal Honey, and paid names. Its payments uh, platform allows consumers to send and receive payments in approximately 200 different markets and in approximately 150 different currencies. Withdraw funds to their bank accounts in 56 currencies and hold uh, balances in their PayPal account in 25 currencies. The company was founded in 1998 and is headquarters in San Jose, California. So PayPal has been around for a while. They survived the dot-com bus. Um, it, it's it's a good, I, my, I seems to me like a um, good company in the fintech uh, space, right? So here we have uh, their recent filings um, and this is their... Uh, balance sheet basically um, June 30, 2023, compared to June, I mean, December 31st, 2022, uh, cash equivalent. So, uh, cash held basically has declined. This is in million. So, that's they got 500, I mean, 5 billion, 504 million in, in cash and cash equivalent. So, things that are liquid and easily converted to cash. It has dropped down from, from recent times. Um, they had 7 billion uh, basically for December 31st, 2022, almost you rounded up 8 billion close to in cash. Um, total current assets basically have declined somewhat as well. Nothing too crazy, um, 54 billion as compared to 57 billion um, for the prior. Uh, total assets um, declined as well, 74 billion compared to 78 billion um, for prior. Uh, total current liabilities uh, we have here a decrease. Um, so liabilities, current liabilities have gone down 41 billion compared to 45 billion for December 31st, 2022. And Something that stands out to me that I find super interesting and I like to see is they keep buying back their stock, right? So treasury stock is basically when a business or a company purchases purchases back their own stock and removes them from um, the outstanding shares out in the market being sold in the secondary market in the marketplace, right? So that's always a great thing to see. Um, either as a share buyback to reward... Um, uh, in investors or shareholders, or as a basically um, way to maybe prop or take advantage of the fact that their stock is selling near um, close lows, right? Near like it's selling historically pretty low compared to to where it was in the past, right? Um, so total equity has declined slightly, nothing crazy, 19 billion compared to 20 billion. Uh, total liabilities and equity, and 74 billion compared to 78 billion um December 31st 2022 so nothing crazy here nothing like except for they keep buying a treasury stock which is great um net income actually increased which is interesting to me uh their stock is selling near all time lows and this seems that they're making money they're cash flowing right they have cash uh coming in net income 1,824 million compared to for the six months ended uh, June 30, 2022, they made 168 million. So huge um, uh, difference in that income, um, which that is good. That stands out to me. Um, what else we got going on here? Uh, 
again, comprehensive income, a cash flow uh, has increased a lot, um, a billion seven hundred fifty six million com uh, compared to a loss of two hundred sixty million uh, for twenty twenty two. So it seems like they're making money, right? Um, here we have, uh, again, what stood out to me is they keep buying their stock back, treasury stock. Um, it seems like they're buying a lot of their stock back. You can kind of see it right here. Um, where here we're looking at December 31st, 2022, they spent $16 billion buying back stock. And uh, March 31st, 2023, spend, uh, it's up to 17 billion and March 30, 2023 is up to, uh, I'm sorry, June 30, 2023 is up to 19 billion um, in terms of treasury stock. So their own stock they've bought back, um, which is always good to see. So um, I'll skip here ahead a little bit. Um, kind of... Uh, talk about something interesting that I keep noticing, right? Oh, so here basically is their uh, revenue uh, by geographical market, right? So revenue by market. Uh, the US um, for the six months, June 30, uh, 2023, uh, as compared to the last year, same period has gone up. So we have 8 billion, um, let me just zoom in here. We have eight billion three hundred fifty-seven million dollars, uh, compared to the same period last year, seven billion five hundred thirty-four million bucks. Um, so revenue basically seems to have increased. Um, revenue is increasing. Nothing crazy there, or nothing um negative there. Uh, they hold Bitcoin, right? So one of the services they do is basically uh, uh, they, they hold uh, crypto assets for the benefit of uh, customers and the crypto assets um, safeguard liability and corresponding safeguard assets. So they, um, here we go. You can see here, Bitcoin, um, Ethereum and other, cryptos um and they just safeguard them right um but these things are worth money right and it seems like they're getting more of it right so you can see here an increase in all of these 532 million as compared to um 299 291 million for the prior um same period right uh, and here we're looking at that six months period uh so increases in this um side of things which they make money here um i don't see that they buy the cryptos but they store them and i imagine they make some sort of money doing that um so they've taken losses in terms of their currency hedges it makes sense they trade a lot in currencies so they hedge against currencies with derivatives seems like they're not um very good at doing that or it's a tough market right currency markets are really hard to uh trade or uses hedges because no one knows right where interest rates are going for any country um so this stood out to me in terms of foreign currency translation adjustment means um they are losing uh, basically in terms of uh um currency exchange let me skip here a bit forward and yeah, so this is the trend I keep talking about, bond losses, any corporation, any bank, any business, anyone that has put money um, over recent times into the bond market, such as US government securities, um, even foreign government securities, corporate debt, um, asset back, asset back security, municipal securities, which are all bonds, right? Are basically, consistently um, losing money because interest rates are going down. So here we have um, uh, June 30, 2023, and you can see US government agency securities, they bought them for $9,139,000. Um, they lost $188 million 
off of that investment and is currently worth $8,951,000. So you can see here basically uh, gross unrealized losses. These are paper losses. They're, they're basically holding on to paper losses just like the banks and, and a lot of other corporations because everyone honestly puts money in the bond market, right? But you can kind of see here a consistent um, just losses, right? Um, and it's just a, a pattern that is going on everywhere, right? Because rates are going up. Um, so a lot of these investments are losing their value um, in the meantime. Uh, so in terms of total unrealized losses, they have 404 million from investments in bonds, which is kind of like what I um, wanted to reiterate. So uh, overall, um, Numerically wise, uh, the book value for PayPal is $17.55 approximately. Um, for a tech company to be trading anywhere near, near book value is very rare and it is not. It's like 50 something bucks a share at the moment. Um, the tech company, FinTech, which are typically um, high valuation companies, um it seems to have come down a lot from almost 300 bucks a share it's down to like 50 something um cash flow they have 2.4 billion dollars in pack in cash flow it's pretty good it means they're making money worse if issues arise they have money to take care of those issues or to weather any storm right so it gives them it gives them um, a lot of us. Uh, it's always good to have cash flow, right? A debt to equity ratio is 2.79. Um, they have a lot of debt compared when compared to equity. In terms of tech companies, I've learned a lot more about them in recent times, and they require a lot of capital to operate, expand, and so forth. Um, so nothing surprising there, but it is a high, higher uh, debt to equity ratio, right? Um, but that's just the nature of things with, with tech companies. Uh, so with that being said, um, I'll leave you guys with a market quote. Um, and this one is great now in the times we are, right? So one lesson which monetary authorities seem to have to relearn every generation is that monetary policy works slowly but brutally. And we're... we're going to keep continue seeing the effects of higher interest rates into the future if they continue to go up right so um with that being said you know i uh super appreciate you guys joining me and um if you like what i said and shared with you hit me with a like and a subscribe i appreciate you for your time thank you guys and i'll talk to you soon